Let's find a vector function r of t given the following information that the derivative of our vector function r prime of t is equal to 2 sine of 2t for the x component plus 3 cosine of 2t for the y component plus t for the z component under the initial condition that our vector function at t equals 0 is equal to 1 i hat plus 2 j hat plus 1 half k hat. So this type of problem is considered an initial value problem. Our initial value problem is such that t is equal to 0. Because a vector function is a vector whose components are functions, we can evaluate the antiderivative of a vector function by evaluating the antiderivatives of the components of the vector function. In this case, it'll be the antiderivative of the x component of our vector function plus a constant of inter integration corresponding to that antiderivative of the x component plus the antiderivative of the y component of our vector function. It will have its constant of integration plus the antiderivative of the z component of our vector function with its own antiderivative. So in evaluating the antiderivative of this vector function, we're going to get a function of our independent variable t. And in evaluating the antiderivatives of each of these components, for the first one we get minus cosine of 2t because that is the antiderivative of 2 sine of t. And then we have our constant of integration for the x component. Then this will be plus the antiderivative of 3 cosine of 2t, which is 3 halves sine of 2t plus our constant of integration. This is in the y direction. plus 1 half t squared plus another constant of integration for our z component. Here is our vector function. The problem is we still have yet to determine the constants of integration, c1 for the x component, c2 for the y component, and C3 for the Z component. This is where the initial value comes in. Remember, the initial value says that our vector function evaluated when t is equal to 0 has an x component of 1, a y component of 2, and a z component of 1 half. So what we have to do is take each component in turn and set it equal to its equivalent in our vector function. So for example, our vector function evaluated at t equals 0 is equal to, well, we have minus cosine of 2 times 0 plus c1 i hat plus 3 halves times the sine of 2 times 0 plus c2 j hat for the y component. For the z component we have 1 half times 0 squared plus c3 
can't. Well, let's equate components because for two vectors to be equal, their components must be equal. What that means is the x component on the left side must be equal to the x component on the right side. The y component on the left side must be equal to the y component on the right side. And the z component on the left side must be equal to the z component on the right side. Let's evaluate these component by component. So beginning with the x component, we have the i hat, which is 1, is equal to, well, let's look at this. I see that we have a cosine of 0. Well, I'll just write it out. I don't want to skip a step yet. Oftentimes when I skip steps, I make mistakes. So let me just write this out. So we have 1 equals minus the cosine of 0 plus c1. Now you might remember that the cosine of 0 evaluates to just 1. So when we solve this for c1, we get c1 is equal to 2. So this means 1 equals minus 1 plus c1, or c1 is equal to 2. Well, we found our first constant of integration. Let's find our second constant of integration corresponding to the y component. So for the y component, on the left-hand side, we have 2. And on the right-hand side, we have minus Oops, not a minus. I was looking at the wrong component. We have 3 halves times the sine of 0 plus c2. Well, from trigonometry, we know that the sine of 0 degrees is equal to 0. This leaves us with a y component being c2 equals 2 for the constant of integration for the y component. Now let's do the z component. The z component is given by 1 half on the left hand side is equal to 1 half times 0 plus c3 on the right hand side. Well you know 1 half times 0 is 0, so this leaves us with c3 is equal to 1 half. We have now found our constants of integration. Let's copy and paste this to the next page. Here is our function r of t. And we have the constant of integrations, c1 is equal to 2, c2 is equal to 2, and c3 is equal to 1 half. This means that our vector function is equal to 2 minus cosine of 2t for the x component plus 2 plus 3 halves sine of 2t for the y component, plus 1 half t squared plus 1 half for the z component. We have now found our vector function given the initial conditions.